edition, a special Thanksgiving edition of Tech Don't Sleep podcast. As always, we have a unique and distinctive guest with us, none other than Matt Seehofer in the building from Comcast Business. And I'm going to tell you, uh, we're going to get some super cool insights uh, from Matt. He's been with Comcast since 2012, right? 2012, yeah, almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. So I'm excited to, to see because as some of you may know, I used to work at Comcast Business as well, uh, but I stayed there for about 13 months. So <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't stay too long, but this is the uh, one of our holiday uh, episodes. So we're really going to be giving thanks to some of our sponsors who have partnered with us uh, to make this podcast possible. And I'm just going to you know, remind you that the podcast is really in place, Matt, for I think three main reasons. Number one, it's a marketing play, right? We want to get the word out about, you know, what we do at MyTech and expose our services to customers. Uh, But we also interview some really cool entrepreneurs and customers and referral partners to give them exposure as well. And then it enables, thirdly, uh, sponsors to get involved, right? Absolutely. To get the word out about uh, some of our vendors and carriers like Comcast Business. So we're excited uh, about what we're doing. We've got a lot of traction and uh, a lot of momentum. And Matt, we can actually track back to you know, some guests being on the show okay. and then them actually becoming customers or sending us referrals. So we know it's working, Perfect. you know, we're, we're, we're having fun, man, and it's working. Uh, so you just got up here from Nash, from uh, Georgia, what, Wednesday, a couple of nights ago. Correct, yep, flew in from Atlanta yeah. on Wednesday. Um, you know, we're finally able to get out, go see our partners face-to-face, you know, during yeah. COVID, you know, like yourself, uh, you and I have never met face to face, so this is actually the first That's time crazy. seeing you. So when did we start working together? Uh, so about three years ago is okay. when, we, when we first started working together. Um, back when I was located in Denver, and so during That's the right. pandemic, moved out to Atlanta, job opened, and uh, yep. still supporting you guys out here, and we're hitting the road. So, so how are you liking Atlanta, man? Man, it's a it's a warm weather state, so I'm glad yeah. to be back in the South. People are just so. Uh, so kind and willing to help you and working with the partner community has been been a blessing. So. No, that's cool. That's that's a good market too. I know Denver's a big market too, but you know, Atlanta, it's a different feel down here that right. southern hospitality and and uh and less snow, I guess. Yeah, a lot less snow. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind the heat, but I can't stand the cold. <laughs> okay, I got you. Hey, so, and where are you from originally? Uh originally from Houston, so I'm a little bit torn. Oh, wow. uh, real quick for the Astros versus the Braves. You know, I can't say who I want to Ooh. win in that one. <laughs> And you got to go with the home team. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, no doubt. Go Braves. Yeah. Well, look, man, I, I want to dive in and I want to explain to people like kind of our uh, partnership or relationship because a lot of times uh, people come up to me and they say, you know, I work at Comcast or, you know, they used to work at a carrier and, and there's a direct side to the carrier and then there's an indirect side to the carrier. So when I used to work at Comcast, I was an employee, you know, I was, I was a sales guy selling deals. And then I, I was on the direct side, and then I went to the indirect side where you know I became an entrepreneur. And and uh, so fortunately, Comcast has an opportunity for firms like MyTech to to market and, and offer their services to customers. But but tell us, n- n- you've never been on the direct side, right? So I actually spent the, the oh, you first were? bit of my career, uh, career with the direct side. So that's okay. where I cut my teeth. Um, so I was in the call center out of the Denver location, selling okay. SMB services, and uh, you know. One thing I realized is I needed to expand my knowledge, and so mm-hmm. what a better way to do it than go to the indirect side, where you're not only selling Comcast, mm-hmm. but you're also helping partners who also are offering other services, mm-hmm. selling other providers. So just the amount of knowledge that I was able to learn in a short amount of time was the reason for going. Yeah. So so how many years have you been on the indirect side? Of the so I've been on the indirect side for almost three years now. Three years. Three years. Okay. Cool. So kind of like right when we started working. Absolutely. Together. Yep. Yep. So yeah. You guys got assigned to me right when I came over, and uh, we hit the ground running. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. Because so so Matt is really our support, our, our you know our advocate within Comcast business. So when we're helping customers, our end users uh, sign up for services. Uh, you know, we're submitting the orders to Comcast and, you know, if we need uh, complex quotes or if we need you to jump on a call uh, to help answer questions or fill in the gaps and all that good stuff, Matt is, Matt is the guy. So you really ramped up on your knowledge and your, and your experience. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then the beautiful part about, um, I have a team behind me. So I also mm-hmm. have Tana Devine, who's my inside partner sales manager. She's based out of Denver. Um, so when I'm out doing meetings and stuff like this, you yeah. know, we always have somebody on yeah. the email box able to help out any partner in a time of need. And then Cheryl Washington, she's based on the Atlanta area as well, but she's okay. a dedicated sales engineer. So, okay. um, you know, it's one of those things, you know, as I'm, I'm so every day is a learning process, you know, yeah. so there's still some things 
that you know you might not know all the in intricacies of, but we'll bring in the sales engineer. They can help out you, the partner, the customer, and yeah. you know we want to make it a win-win for everybody. No, that's awesome, man. I love it. Um, I was supposed to read your bio. I forgot, but let me <laughs> let me tell let me tell the folks about you a little bit, man. Because most of the time we play like this crazy game, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell folks about you, and then we'll kind of talk about your journey and some key sure. insights, some takeaways that we can we can uh, take away for entrepreneurs or uh, business owners. So, uh, Matt C. Hoffer, you're an innovative and results oriented, I like that, sales and marketing professional. Uh, you got a passion for working with sales leaders and helping them improve their team's ability to differentiate themselves and bring value to their clients. Now, as I mentioned, you worked with Comcast since 2012 uh, and you moved into the channel around 2018 and as a partner sales manager, you built strong relationships with partners and your goal is to help partners and that's like companies like MyTech uh, attain a higher level of success by training and education, strategic marketing initiatives and social media activities. So I love this man because one thing that really stands out to me in this and reading that is that your goal is to help other people. Your goal is to help partners win. And I think that like we have, MyTech has positioned itself uh, as you know, kind of that strategic partner for a lot of our referral partners. Like right. we, we call it filling in the gaps, but we want to help them win. We want to help them add a revenue stream, or we want to help them close deals. Uh, but just talk about that philosophy as it comes coming from a sales professional <laughs> perspective. So I mean, in the day, relationship is key. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to build a solid foundation. Um, I want to get to know your business inside and out. You know, what are your dreams? What are your visions? Where are you trying to go? Because um, then that's where me and my, my team, we will try to come in, um, you know, look at your vision, and we want to help you grow to that. So we want to see where we fit in, where we can, you know, if, if there's knowledge gaps or anything we can do to help you become more successful, that's where we'll come into play. Because we always tell people in the day, if you don't make money, we don't make money. Yep. But, and, yep. you know, we're all in this to, uh, you know, make better lives for ourselves. Yep. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk with partners as, as far as, you know, researching verticals that you sell into mm -hmm. and, and how you can relay that to the customers that you're helping. Like, hey, we, we sold so-and-so this service the other day. They're loving mm -hmm. it. Have you thought about doing this? So mm -hmm. just um, a different way to go about the thought process of helping the customers in the end goal. Yeah. And also, once you get into an account, you want to have that relationship forever. Right. We're not looking just to sell them something and move on. We yeah. want to we wanna also... Not only grow the partner, but we want to grow with the customer as well. Yeah. And so how do you overcome? Because Comcast, to be real, has like this stigma, right? Uh, it, 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 when, when I talk about Comcast, sometimes people like turn, tune up, like their face gets um, messed up, right? <laughs> They're like, oh, Comcast. But like to me, like Comcast is is a dominant partner, like for our business, right? Sure. And, and, and I think that... Um, you know, the stigma is maybe customer service or something else. And a lot of people have never even experienced a negative uh, or had a negative experience with Comcast, but they just heard about something, right? Right. And so how how do you get around that? Is it the relationship building or how do you like, you know, approach that if, you know, people are like, I don't want to fool with Comcast? So that's a great question. And, you know, in the day, that's why we like to grow that foundation and, you know, create that relationship with the partner. Because um, the partner has the, the trust of the customer right. on how they want to navigate their service, get them all set up. So um, a lot of that just comes down to having those conversations, being open and honest. And I feel that's what's made us and my team successful because we have a win fast, lose fast model. We're not going to try to push something on somebody that's not going to work, mm -hmm. you know, because in the day it's the relationship is everything. So mm -hmm. we want you to sell the right services, have the right setup for the customer where they're able to operate at a hundred percent and you know, there's no issues. And so I think that's the way you get past that. And then in turn, that will create testimonials, you know, mm -hmm. where other customers will start talking to other customers and, and you can reference that again, going back to yeah. that vertical selling, like, Hey, we did this for so-and-so. They've been extremely happy. You know, have you thought about doing this? Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell us about, uh, a partner you may have worked with and, and, uh, a success story, right? Like a case study of a partner you worked with, maybe they were small and they, they grew their firm, or maybe you helped them close a, a really nice size deal or something like that. Tell, tell us about some, some interesting or success story. 
Man, I would say uh, one of outside of me. Yeah, outside of you. Okay, <laughs> outside no, of no, me. Yeah. No, but one that really sticks out to me. Uh, they're actually a firm based out of Atlanta, so Northwest mm -hmm. Exterminating. Mm -hmm. um, so they were looking at. You know, with COVID, they were a one-man band. So they have one IT guy. Um, he has locations all over Georgia, going into Alabama and down into Florida. Uh, and, and they're looking to expand, but he's a one-man band. So he's, mm -hmm. he came to the partners like, hey, I'm having this issue. Um, anytime there's issues, I'm not able to get out there fast enough. The service could be down for two, three days. And, okay. you know, if you don't have your internet, you can't book appointments, sure. you're not able to take payments, in the day you're losing money. Mm -hmm. um, so we did a proof of concept with our SD-WAN service. So we call it ActiveCore, which is our platform. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with that, he's able to see the, the setup, the health, everything of his entire network from his cell phone. Yeah. Can, can you imagine being on the go, you're going to get your cup of coffee, and you're like, hey, how's my network doing? And you're yeah. able to like, oh, everything's good, or yeah. oh, hey, I see a site's impaired. Yeah. So from that, he he realized how beneficial that would be for him, um, allow the business to run at 100%, and you know, be able to be more proactive only being a one man. Mm -hmm. And so he, he took that from the proof of concept, three sites, and then he grew that to over 20 sites of our SD-WAN services wow. today. So, nice. um, and it's just been absolutely fantastic. And, you know, it's it, it also saves on the overhead because it, it was getting to the point where they were gonna have to probably hire uh, more IT professionals to work with the company based all over, but then they were gonna still have the issues because if a site goes down in Florida and they, the closest they have somebody in, in Georgia, they can't get them out there fast enough. Or this, they're, they're able to monitor everything. Um, if, if there ever is an issue, we'll actually get a support ticket going right from there. Yeah. And so we're on it. Yeah. And so they they love it and they're growing fast. No, right? I love it, man. So so when companies are looking to grow and scale like that, um, you know, Comcast business can be a, a solution, especially with the SD WAN absolutely uh, solution with multi location opportunities to be able to to monitor and manage that network absolutely. right right from your cell phone. Yep, right from your cell phone. And the coolest thing about our SD WAN service because before. Comcast Business was only available in Comcast Business Territory. Yeah. But with our SD-WAN services, um, we can actually install that anywhere in the U.S. So we do a professional install, get boots on the ground, a tech will walk the customer through the setup. Um, we'll have a solution architect that will design it. And then that can have up to four underlay circuits into it. So mm -hmm. then you can you, you never have to worry about not having service. You know, uh, like for, uh, the redundancy. Before, you know, the yeah. redundancy. Before I came up here, actually, I went to the dry cleaners to get my clothes, and they mm -hmm. were unable to take my credit card payment because uh, their machine was down because wow. their internet was down. Wow. Had they had something like this, they could have yeah. been in business. Did you sell them? Did you close them? Oh, I mean, I, I pitched them. <laughs> you know what I mean? I pitched them, but I needed my clothes because I had a plane to catch. So. <laughs> All right. Like, give me your card. Let's set an appointment. I'll be back yeah. next week. You know, no, I love it, man. And and it's amazing, like when, when companies, you know, have a plan or a strategy to grow, you know, to scale, they need to include the, the IT uh, element in there, right? Um, because yeah, you know, a lot of times we as entrepreneurs, we think growing a company is just getting more customers, right? right. And that's a great thing because customers, you know, generate revenue, uh, but we got to be able to uh, maintain that and handle it, right? Absolutely. And that's the key. And, and one other thing I, I would like to point <clears throat> out, more and more today, you know, the most important thing is protecting your data. Mm -hmm. You know, I imagine you're hearing about all these security breaches. Mm -hmm. We had the Colonial Pipeline, they got the DDoS mm -hmm. attack. Um, you know, that shut down, I mean, almost shut down the nation. I mean, I don't know if you saw the lines at the uh, gas station. I remember freaking about, out. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in, in the Georgia area especially, it was tough mm -hmm. to get gas there for a few days. But, um, you know, with our SD-WAN, we can also layer on our, our advanced security, our mm -hmm. UTM. So, um, taking things to a SASE model. So before you had a corporation, you had the firewall there on site, but as employees do the work from anywhere, especially now with COVID, those customer or those employees as they were tapping back into the network weren't necessarily protected from getting hacked themselves mm -hmm. um, and so that's how a lot of these DDoS attacks were happening so with the UTM um, it basically takes that think of the you know the firewall being around a centralized location now you're moving that to be around every employee so now every employee is safe and prevented uh, you know, at max capacity of preventing the attacks. Because that's how DDoS happens, right? I mean, they're they're getting, they're reaching out to or an employee through email or they're sitting on the network for a while and then trying to engage. You got it. 
Yeah, yeah. and they'll come in the weirdest ways because it might not necessarily be anybody that's on your payroll per se. It could be, hey, I had a vendor out to work on my AC unit and they were able to get in that route. So, wow. so the best thing you can do that's is, crazy. you know, protect yourself. And, and you know, you think about <laughs> nowadays, you have insurance on everything. You have insurance on your phone, you have insurance on your car. So, I mean, why would you not have insurance on your data at your company? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense to me. But well, it's just like if your internet's down, you're losing money. But if your network is locked up, you definitely ain't doing it. You definitely ain't doing nothing. <laughs> and you probably got to pay a ransom to get that um, box. Yeah. So. And you got to pay that through Bitcoin, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so so with, with your career at Comcast Business, uh, it's been almost 10 years. So where, where do you see it? You going you gonna to rock and roll another 10, 20 years? What Man, I would at? love to. So uh, Comcast has been wonderful for me. Yeah. You know? Um, just being able to move around a company like Comcast, and, and they're always willing to train and help. Mm -hmm. um, like just this past week, we had our, or this week, excuse me, we had our channel chief, Craig Schlockbaum. He came out to uh, the Atlanta area because he wanted to go see partners. Mm -hmm. He wanted to meet people face to face. Um, I think when you get into some of these other companies, you know, the titles start to stay away from you, if you yeah. know what I mean, where he wants to uh, roll up his sleeves and get dirty, get out into the nice. field and, and meet all the people. So, um, if you asked me this question a few years ago when I was on the direct side, mm -hmm. I, I don't know that I would be as willing to stay there. But now that I've been in the channel, it's it's more of a family feel yeah. versus working for a larger corporation. So yeah. um, I'm in for another 20 years. No, that's years. cool, man. <laughs> no, that's, 20 years, absolutely. Yeah, it probably is a different culture than the direct side um, because of you know who you have to engage right. and, and build relationships with. Uh, but that's pretty cool, man. I, I, um, so what, what did you do before Comcast though? Were you in sales? So I, ever since I was 18 years old, I had a quota over my head. So yeah. I, I started out in the cellular industry. Okay. Um, this is back before they had color screen phones, you know, so dating wow. myself a little bit, but, yeah. uh, back before text was even popular, I remember you that. know, I remember T9, that. when you had to for C, you had to hit the button three times, you know, <laughs> uh, but always had a quote over my head, always been in communications okay. and, uh, it's just fun working with people. You yeah, know, I love talking to people, getting to know people, what they're trying to do, and, and how I can help. Yeah, you know, and it's it's rewarding. Yeah, you know, every day is different. And you love to travel. Love to travel. Yeah, you so know, you that was part of the reason for moving to Georgia because okay. I've never even been to Georgia. But I'm like, absolutely, there's an opportunity open. Um, I love the partner base that I've been working with previously, such as yourself, and it was time to make the move and see your yeah. stuff. So, so in your role now, like how often do you have to travel or how, but now that you're back on the road and stuff, how so, often are you out? You know, so that's uh, still a work in progress because, you know, as we're coming out of COVID mm -hmm. and we're getting the okay now to travel because mm -hmm. before, you know, we could only do our meetings virtual. That's why right. you and I never met face yeah. to face. So, um, I mean, personally, I would like to be at least, you know, out of my seat three days a week. Uh, whether that's okay. just going to meetings locally yeah. or if I'm going to Mississippi, Louisiana, Nashville, any of that. Because I think people do business with people they know and people they like. Right. You know, so it, it's you can build a relationship over the phone, but it's different when you're working at their office, you're rolling mm -hmm. your sleeves up with them, getting dirty, going on customer appointments. Because then they not only see you representing Comcast, but then they'll see Comcast with sure. you. Sure. So. Yeah, that's a little credibility. Yeah, for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. So I know Comcast, uh, I don't know if the, I heard about an acquisition Comcast made with Maser G. Is, G, you is that it. done? That is done. Okay. So now we're just rolling through on, you know, what does it look like moving forward? Yeah. So the acquisition is complete. So, so tell me why, you, why did Comcast go after that company? Like what was, what's the whole game, the end goal sure, of sure. strategic strategy? So, I mean, there, there's probably more to it than I know, mm -hmm. you know, as sure. you know, there's, there's um, yeah. more important people making these decisions. But uh, the one really cool thing about Mesa G is they've really been the innovator when it comes to the SD-WAN services. And mm -hmm. they also have an international play. Okay. So Comcast right now is only, you know, only in the United States. Yeah. Um, I think about two years ago, Comcast also bought Sky over in Europe. Okay. And then, so is that now the satellite we, internet? Company? That is the, the yeah. satellite, and, uh, okay. satellite TV, I believe, over in over in Europe. Now, I don't know mm. all the details if they do the internet okay. as well, but, um, you know, that and one of the main things is Maser G is about an 80% in the channel business. Okay. So a lot of this was geared towards the channel and, and how we can expand, because I think as, as the companies are moving forward, they're seeing the importance of the partner 
versus your traditional just sales agent. Absolutely. Because you know we want to be the network crew. We want to sell solutions. Right. You know we don't want to just sling circuits. Because mm -hmm. um, there's more to it. You know mm -hmm. you got to get in there and know the customer. And the partners do know that. But bringing Macer G into the table takes us from you know it, it basically doubles our business in the channel. Okay. But gives us that international wow, play that's and. Cool. Uh, and they they they're in some big accounts. Okay, you know, so it's it's a different customer base that we're going to bring to the table. As yeah, because well. Comcast business in itself is almost a ten billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. um, so Comcast, the one thing I love about Comcast is they've always had their eyes to the future. Mm -hmm. And you know, being an entrepreneur yourself, you know, you're always thinking forward. How do I grow? And so mm -hmm. Comcast has always done that. So I just see this in the next step in the evolution of, of growing Comcast business. Yeah. And and so with with that acquisition, um, you know, I, I read an article the other day about how Facebook and Google and Amazon are working to provide internet to the world, right? And there's some crazy number. I was kind of astounded. It's like a lot of people in the world don't have access to internet. That blows my mind. Yeah, you know, this day and age. Yep. So Google and five Google and Facebook are laying fiber in the ocean, right? In like the Atlantic Ocean to different continents and, and I guess to get internet out. Um, but is do you see Comcast, you know, making a play to do that? Or is that just a totally different direction or angle? Man, that's a really good question. Uh, I don't know that I can really answer that one. I mean, mm -hmm. I know Comcast is looking to expand I know they're looking to have the international play, yeah. but I don't know what that, that looks like. If it's just more of a major metropolitan area that they're trying to go after versus yeah. like smaller, more remote areas. So that's a good question. That I don't know. Okay. No, it just, it just made, just yeah. rung a bell. Yeah. And I started thinking about it, but I, I, I definitely, you know, the Comcast story is interesting in and of itself for, to me. And, and if you guys that have never heard the story, you just read up on it. You can Google it probably. Uh, but I mean, they, they they were entrepreneurs initially, and in, in I mean, started what like in Mississippi Tupelo, or something Mississippi. in Tupelo, Mississippi, yep, yep. right? <laughs> and went and bought like a small cable company yep. down there, and just, just started expanding. And yeah, that was back when the uh, the owner of the company was just going out and doing the old fashioned way, just door knocking, trying to get yeah. people to sign up. And so it's really a uh, it has a roots foundation where it started small, yeah. And then as it grew, they moved to Philadelphia, and then from there it just blew up. Yeah. And now we're the largest cable provider in the United States. Yeah. And uh, one little fun fact that I always like to talk about. So we got over 400,000 miles of fiber in the ground, mm -hmm. over 700,000 miles of coax. Mm -hmm. So if you put all that end to end, it can wrap around the earth more than 26 times. Wow. I, I mean, that that to me just kind of blew my mind because I, I know how far the drive is just across Texas. So just to think <laughs> about that. <laughs> it seems like it never ends. <laughs> yeah. It's just flat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you uh, coming up and, and meeting us here at the office and Absolutely. Uh, learning a little bit more about you and your role and what you do. And guys, uh, Comcast has, has, has been a sponsor of our, some of our previous events. I think the first event I did with my tech, Comcast was a sponsor. So Comcast has, has always been uh, super supportive. Uh, of what we're doing at MyTech. So we appreciate that. And thank you, Duncan. Absolutely. You've been uh, nothing but great to us. So we want to do all we can to help you out. I really appreciate you having me on this today. So Definitely. Um, as always, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. All right, guys. And, and, uh, and, and as you're listening to this, if you need consultation, I'm trying to figure <laughs> out what, what do I want to say here? No, but I mean, listen, you know, obviously MyTech is a solutions provider uh, for Comcast, so uh, we can definitely get you quote options and, and, and try to be that solutions provider for you and your company. So reach out to us uh, and, and Matt is on board to help help us if we have a complex situation and we need to, you know, get in the trenches and, and make it work for you or, or create an SD-WAN. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's one thing I just recommend, you know, if you're... If you're a selling agent out there and you have a question, you're running into some headwinds and you don't know how to move forward, uh, reach out to Bill. Bill, reach out to, to me. We can bring Cheryl, my sales engineer, on yeah. the phone and, and we'll help you. You know, We're available for you, so let us know how we can help. That's the cool thing about it. Like It's a team effort and uh, because I don't know everything. I don't consider myself a tech guy anyway and um, I may not be available. <laughs> but you know, I mean, if you got a team, that's, that's why I'm really big about teams anyway. Um, you know, they can support you long term and Absolutely. consistently. So that's really key. 
Um, make sure you guys are following the podcast. If you're not on YouTube or on Apple or Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, but especially YouTube because you can actually see us. Okay, <laughs> you, you can see us and our, our big smiles. And again, guys, I, I just want to say happy holidays. Uh, if you if you're if you're celebrating Christmas or, or Thanksgiving, enjoy your family. Be safe out there, and uh, be sure to engage us. Hey man, thanks again. Appreciate it, man. All right, thank you so much for having See me. See y'all. Peace. <laughs>